Broadcasting to the world, this is On Call with Chad McCall. With Chad McCall. In our show, we bring you inspiration, strategies, and insights on how to start, grow, and scale your business. It's drastically changed my life. The show is so informative. I just love it. It's honest. It's helped me grow as a person. Real talk about life, lifestyle, society, and living limitless. Learning from the top influencers across the world, along with industry experts, authorities for you to live your greatest life. It's time to level up. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Here's your host, best-selling author and mentor, Chad McCall. Welcome, welcome to another episode of On Call with Chad McCall. And that's me, your host for the next little bit. So just a reminder for those that have been listening, please leave a five-star review and let me know that you like these conversations that I have each and every week. And for those of you that are new to the podcast, I'd like to say a very special welcome to you. Each week I call experts, industry leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, and finally, those that are living the life that they've designed. What I look for in these conversations is actually how they did it, any tips, tricks, secrets, anything of their success for us to listen to and see how we can invite their strategies into our lives or our businesses. My conversations are never scripted, never rehearsed, just real people having real conversations, and it's always fun. So are you ready? Let's get going. Today, I'm calling Dom Fawcett, an entrepreneur, podcaster, radio host, actor, influencer, leadership speaker, and several other things, too, that I know I'm forgetting. But the importance of what he does and why I want you to listen is he's created something called Command Presence. I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to let him explain it. But I just want you to think of that name. And you may start to guess what it is. And any of you entrepreneurs, coaches, mentors, consultants, really pay close attention to today's episode. So hang tight while I give former service member of our military, canine police officer, former that, motorcycle racing enthusiast, Porsche driving, big truck having, cowboy boot wearing, Dom Fawcett, a call. Hello, it's Dom. Dom, this is Chad. How are you? Outstanding, brother. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I've got you on the podcast this morning. Be ready. I stay ready. Let's do this, brother. Got it. So how are you today, man? How was the move? You got all moved and everything? Are you settled in yet? You know what? I am I am just about settled in. Uh, the, the, the move was uh, a little hectic, but... It, be, it beats getting shot at, so I'm, I'm good now. So I gave you a little bit of an intro, Dom, telling the people about you, but I really wanted to have you share today like your experience, how you got to the point where you are right now from your background. I mean, you've got such a, an amazing story from where you came from, but I want to know a little bit like where you came from, but how it led to what you have right now with Command Presence. You no, know, high-level overview of my background, um, I left the house like many people do, and some people go to college, some people just leave. And uh, I joined the military and I was K-9 in the military, Air Force to be specific. And I, I, I just learned a lot how animals communicate and uh, the power of your voice, being challenged to do things that in the event things got squirrely, you would die. But obviously I'm alive and I enjoyed the adrenaline. I enjoyed the, the growth that happened in that space. And I left and I became a uh, police officer when I got out of the military. I think it was a, a, a fitting transition for me. And I, I, I did the police officers, officer thing. And I learned even more about society and some of the woes and some of the, um, the, the parts of society that you won't see in movies, you won't see in the news. Fortunately, most people will never experience in their life. And it taught me a lot about leadership and being a person of influence, even though uh, from situation to situation, things could could be detrimental, right? And and maintaining your com- composure and how how powerful that is to to engage in silence and and be able to use your intuition uh, to overcome barriers, barriers that you know going left saves your saves your life, going right could get you killed. I, I, I felt that a natural transition from that was to go into the corporate space, right? Nothing could go wrong for me in the corporate space because at the end of the day, I'm not going to die. Like my job doesn't require me to make decisions that could cost people their lives. So when I jumped into the corporate space, sales first is what I, I, I started with. It was the, the easiest thing for me to get into and make the quickest amount of money. 
<clears throat> and then I, I started actually having a knack for leadership. And John Maxwell quotes it like this, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And the reason I jumped into the corporate space is because a lot of the people that I met in law enforcement that had problems were these executives and CEOs and all the back, like the home problems. So when I became a, a corporate leader, it was very easy because people are, everybody, most people fake smile and they don't really know how to deal and they overcomplicate situations and they think money's going to fix it. So I did that for 12 to 13 years. And then uh, I just, I just started speaking. I've been speaking since I was a cop, um, even before that in the military, but professionally just started doing it in the, in the uh, corporate space. And I, I feel at that moment, I found what, what I was passionate about. Like being able to stand in front of a group of professionals at the time and provide insight based off life experience and, and you know tactics to win, et cetera, et cetera. I realized people just lack confidence. I would always get the questions of, Dom, like you show up in these boardrooms and like nobody knows you, but within seven to 15 minutes, people like you and they're respecting you. And they don't like, how do you do that? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't start with me. I start with them. Right. At the end of the day, we all go home. We all may not have the same life experiences as we're sitting at the in the boardroom. We may not be the same gender, same you know background, same religious beliefs, but we all go home. And a lot of us deal with the same thing. So we, my mantra became change one life every day for the rest of my life. Ironically enough, I accidentally fell into entrepreneurship. Influencers, everybody listening today, experts, industry leaders, like this is what we're talking about, you know, speaking, learning how to speak. And that really is where command presence came from. Now talk about like command presence and what that means in the speaking world. Because there's a lot of people listening right now that are speaking or trying to speak or may want to become a speaker. And this is where you are the expert in getting people out there with their message. Talk a little bit about command presence. Speaking wasn't always easy for me. As At the age of five, due to a traumatic experience, I started stuttering. And then shortly thereafter, Tourette's. I was the kid that twice a week in school would have to go to a speech therapist. And I did that all the way through probably the first couple of years of high school. And then learning another style of communication, so nonverbals as a police officer, um, helped me to understand. I didn't know that I was getting prepared for what I'm doing today. And command presence for me is that thing that allows you to show up in true confidence. Uh, and I think the word's overused, but I'm going to use it. Uh, authenticity in who you are, uh, understanding your purpose without saying a word. But when you do speak, you're clear, you're audible, and you're dialed in and you're effective in your communication. Uh, one, one phrase that actually my, my mom used to use uh, it was two. One, speak so that a blind man can see. And this is for you storytellers out there. Uh, and then the other one was, you may only have five seconds to deliver a message to somebody because it's a life-threatening situation. And I utilize those just for myself in everyday communication. But being a radio show host, a podcaster, being on TV, uh, teaching people how to speak, it's allowed me to understand that, as, and I'm, I'm talking the English language, uh, because this is where I'm proficient. Everybody I come in contact with speaks speaks English, and it, but everybody I I come in contact with over over complicates speaking. They call it public speaking. Ninety five percent, ninety nine percent of the time, that's what we do. We speak in public. Uh, anytime you're not speak, you're speaking to yourself. That's not public speaking. But people get very uncomfortable with speaking, and for years I could not understand why. I'm like, this is the way we tell somebody we love them. This is the way we convey um, a passionate message to somebody if we're upset with them. This is the way that we we say thank you to somebody. But when it comes to our business, when it, we think we have to be somebody separate. So when it comes to command presence in speaking, I start with learn to speak with command presence at home first. Once you can dial in or lock, get locked in on how you communicate to your spouse, to your kids, even to yourself in silence, you then transfer that same style of communication to those you come in contact with. A lot of people think they need to be different in their communication uh, at work or at play or at home. But when you learn to utilize the correct words, right, and you learn to have inflection in your voice so you don't have to repeat yourself, uh, and you start by valuing yourself and enunciating words, uh, You people see you as more important than you actually are. 
And I'm bringing this up from experience. I don't have a degree in anything. Yet in the corporate space, all of the jobs I ever had required a minimum of a master's in finance. So what was it that allowed me to promote and what is it that allows me to continue to do what I do? It's my ability to effectively communicate in front of others. And that's so important right now, Dom, with people that are you know, in the space that you're training and that you work with, being able to communicate. Let's talk about the people that are new. So any of the, the listeners right now, if they're new to speaking and they want to learn a few things that they can work on, what's two things that they can do to get started learning how to be that better communicator and maybe home if that's where they start? Like, What's two little tips that you can give some advice on? Number one, say what you need to say and not what you want to say. If you can learn to speak void of emotion, I'm not saying being dry, but if you can learn to communicate void of what a, a negative re emotional response would cause you to do, uh, you'll be very effective and you'll trim the fat in your communication, i.e. allowing people to listen more to what you say. The other one is, uh, Kevin Hart uses a phrase, say it with your chest. My dad said it. My grandfather said it. I've heard it since I was a kid. But when when you speak, whether you're sitting down or standing up, chest up, shoulders back, make eye contact. Now we're talking in person. And know what you're going to say and understand your nonverbals. And we can talk about that, you know, a little later on. But those are the two things. Yeah, you're training speakers. You're, you know, you're a, a radio host actor. I mean, you've got so many other things. I was giving you the intro and I, I probably forgot several things done with your background and what you do. And I've been able to experience, you know, one of your events sitting there watching you speak, watching you command the audience, watch you, you know, control the room and watching the people that you've worked with. When you're dealing with seasoned speakers, now you talked a little bit about someone that's new. Some of the guys that you work with, they have been doing it for 10, 20 years, probably speaking, and they come to you and they're needing to hone skills because some of the listeners here have been doing this for a while. What is two things you can give the seasoned speakers some things to change? Because right now, 2020s is flipped the script on a lot of people right now. So you got to be a little bit different. What's some advice you're doing that's out there working right now? Great question. I have a, a client right now who he's an active duty lieutenant. Uh, so he's an officer in the Navy and he's a lieutenant. And he had been, he's been speaking for quite some time. So when I started coaching him, the first thing I, I listen to is his storytelling. And all speakers know they need to be able to tell a story. The problem is uh, two things. One, the limited inflection in their voice as they tell the story and the story's too long. So my rule, one of my rules of thumb is within every 90 seconds, you should be able to make them smile, laugh, and think. Sometimes smile, laugh, think, and cry or at least give them goosebumps about something. And the way you do that is you, when you listen to music, the beat doesn't stay the same. There's, when you watch as I'm, and you listen to the sound of your voice, think of it from a, a musical standpoint. You have to come in fast. Hey, I'm gonna share this story with you real quick, but what it did for me was it taught me how to serve. So you see how fast I came in and then I slowed down. What that does is it draws, your, it draws the audience in. And then the nonverbal. So a lot of seasoned speakers, they, they, they're horrible at nonverbals. Nonverbals are, uh, you know, opening your arms up, keeping your hands out of your, your, uh, your pockets, keeping, stop gripping the mic, stepping away from the uh, lectern, right? Engaging the first couple aisles of the audience and understanding your message so that if a, a fifth grader can understand it, a 50 year old will buy it. That's pretty powerful right there. That's really good. I like that. Hopefully everybody wrote that down. Just what you're saying right there, those tips for people. And I think too, in the speaking world, Dom, and watching you, knowing that someone giving a 15 minute TED talk or someone doing a 60 minute presentation that's a training, or then they're doing a 90 minute sales presentation or even a three day sales presentation, those are all different levels of speaking that require training and my, I mean, there's a lot of like mindset. There's a lot of uh, transition. There's a lot of stuff that people need to go through to learn. You can't just be one, good at one and it work across all of them. And you, you bring up a valid point. I'm going to leverage, let's say a TV interview, a radio show, a podcast, right? A podcast is very, 
uh, conversational. For example, we would just have a conversation just like this. It's a very natural, fluid, flowing podcast. And even if you're doing a podcast by yourself, not interviewing anybody, not you, but your audience, it's a very slow form. You know, it's just a natural flow. But on on radio, things are exaggerated. So a podcast introduction, which you guys all already heard because Chad had an awesome introduction with his podcast on a radio show. And I'm going to use my radio voice here. You would go something along the lines of, welcome to the Think React Lead radio show. I'm your host, executive coach and leadership speaker, Dom Fawcett with Think React Lead here with you on 960 The Patriot, KKNT. So that is is typical of radio. The problem is people try to do that on their podcast. It turns your audience off. So going to television, television is more animated because people now can see you. So let's say I'm on television, but I use the same radio intro voice or or the same introduction I use on radio. Good morning. My name is Dom Fawcett, your executive coach and leadership speaker with Think React Lead here with you on the Think React Lead show. Today, we're going to talk about this. So it's it's less choppy and it's more well i'm smiling you guys and gals can't see this now let's let's bring do i talk like this at the grocery store no so on stage like sales and i hate to say it but you if you're selling something like that's the time to be the shamwow guy speaking is 80 percent entertainment and 20 percent education and, and people take things in in bits and Three three points. Every time you speak, most people can't engage an audience for 60 minutes. They they cannot. So speaking for 15 minutes, it should be ideal. Just because somebody gives you 30 minutes on stage doesn't mean that you have to fill every single second. Like you, you'll you shoot yourself in your foot. And I know, Chad, you've seen that before. This dude needs to stop right now, seven minutes in to a 30 minute talk. Yeah. I have. <laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned that. But if I want the listeners to really latch on to the differences of, it's almost like I want to say the word experience, Dom. Like you're going to experience a podcast, you've experienced a TV, or you experience a radio. There's different experiences that the listener or your audience is programmed to to pay attention to, right? And that's what you're going at after. I think they're conditioned to know different ones, and you've got to know how to do those different things based off of what you're doing, like based off of your audience or based off the platform that you're using, because there's some amazing content guys, you know, there's some amazing educators out there, but they're horrible presenters. And you know, those people too. Yes. So, so true. And I think people, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. If a fifth grader can understand it, a 50 year old will buy it. Doesn't mean you're selling something. What I'm saying is simplify your message. One of the tips that I, I I have found that works and most people don't do, let's say you are going to speak on stage or you're a current speaker. When you get introduced on stage, when you grab the mic or the mic goes live for you, don't reintroduce yourself. So, for example, let's say Chad's an MC. He'll say, welcome to the stage, Dom Fawcett with Think React Lead, your executive coach and leadership speaker. Dom, welcome to this conference. A lot of speakers get on stage and the moment they touch the mic, they say, hey, Chad, thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. Everybody, my name's Dom Fawcett. That is garbage. Don't ever do that. You do not have to thank the MC. You go right in to something that's going to grab the audience's attention. I think, and I was at a, a, a conference. It was a an after Grammys conference, not a conference. It was a thing. So it was at night. A couple thousand people in the room. It was very loud. I get the mic. They introduce me. I come on stage. And I'm I'm the veteran of the group. So being a veteran and an ex-cop, I'm allowed to come off certain ways. So I realized that these people are not going to listen to me. They don't know me. Like I'm backstage with Wesley Snipes and there's other notables in the audience. So they introduce me and I'm in a tux and I come on stage and I, I triggered my voice to use my drill instructor voice. And what I said was, this is the moment I touched the mic. Many of you in here struggle with suicidal thoughts. But what about those veterans and those individuals that struggle with homicidal thoughts? You could hear a pin drop. Because nobody, one, nobody's heard an intro like that. Two, they're not really sure, like, what I'm about to do. Is this dude, like, like, what is going to happen? But what I've done was I've entertained them. 
So think about the beginning of a movie like trans or a, a uh, what do they call it? A preview of a, of a uh, movie of like Transformers, right? Or in any movie, it's an emotional roller coaster. Learn to do that in less than seven seconds. Yeah. See, and like coming on the stage, like what you just told people, um, doing that, being able to come on, what to say, what to do, that's a huge nugget for anyone listening that's been in the space of speaking and training because – you know, you've got to transform sometimes your speaking ability from stages. Uh, let's shift a gear to like doing a Zoom call or doing a performance because a lot of coaches, influencers right now, Dom, they're moving from live events temporarily until we, you know, depending on what the market or economy does, right? But they're going on to Zoom. Talk about Zoom right now and the power that people are, what they have to do to get ready to give a good Zoom presentation to multiple people. Okay, Zoom, I'm glad you brought this up. We're going to spend a couple seconds here. Forget about talking. Let's talk talk about how you look on camera. Stop using your laptop internal camera or your desktop internal camera. Get a, I use Camlink. It's a little um, card, a memory, just Google it, Camlink, C-A-M-L-I-N-K. I don't make money from them, but it's just what I use. I, I use one of two cameras, a Sony 4K camcorder or a Sony A6400 um, mirrorless camera, how you show up and the image you portray again, zoom or any other platform is television. So let's say you're doing a panel and there, I literally just came off of a conference just now, maybe 35 minutes ago. And there's, uh, 78 people there and six of us are speakers. Your background, I use a step and repeat, and it's got my logos on it. It's got my branding on it. It has my website on it. So now I don't have to say it because it's already behind me. Don't use a green screen, people. Just spend a couple hundred bucks on a step and repeat. Google what a step and repeat is if you don't know what it is. There. Um, your 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 shirts, right? Like I'm, I'm wearing gym shorts on the bottom, but I have a, a very nice colorful shirt that offsets my background color. My background color is gold, black, and I've got a little bit of white. My shirt's floral and it, it, it's a disconnect from there. So it separates my background from my foreground, right? I'm not showing up looking tired. Vince, you may have to put on a little makeup like you would be on television. And these are all the things you do before you talk. And then when you're talking, you look in the camera, not at yourself on your computer screen. So you maintain visual eye contact or eye contact in the lens of your camera. And this is before you start talking because you want to have the in that little square of the hundreds of squares on your virtual conference. You want to be the one that stands out. So now your visual quality is great. So they can only expect that your verbal quality or communicational quality is going to be outstanding. And then use a mic. Don't use the internal microphone of your computer. I have a, a, a separate road mic that normally attaches to my camera uh, and it's right under the, it's right on my desk, literally three inches away from my face. And again, before you start speaking, now that you have this, when you get introduced to speak as you're the speaker, or even if you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? Many of you have one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and they spend a pretty penny. They, your clients don't want to see you in a t-shirt. They want to, Treat it like you're, it's an actual business meeting in a boardroom. How would you dress for that business meeting? Because at the end of the day, it's business. So spend a, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks on a camera. Get the cam link and for, you know, stuff I told you about. Come up sharp. Become the obvious choice. I'm going to repeat that. Become the obvious choice in everything that you do. Because many of you, your consultations, you're not landing because of the way you look on camera. Good tip right there. Everybody pay close attention. This is a, Dom is a Zoom expert, presenter, coach, trainer, thousands of these. And clients <laughs> are doing thousands of minutes and recordings every day. You've got to pay attention to this. Like this is nuggets that you have to be ready for right now in 2020. Because some people, Dom, may not go back to the standard on the stage. They're going to have to learn different ways to communicate. Very, very true. I was reading a couple of things, Dom, and something that stood out to me. It's like, you made this really cool post. I'm going to let you explain it. You said, boost your EQ. Tell me a little bit about what boost your EQ uh, really meant when you said that. And I, I posted that a couple of weeks ago, and I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a video. Um, we all know, or if you don't, I'll share it with you. EQ is emotional quotient. 
And what I'm referring to starts with people lacking the ability to effectively communicate because their communication is all about them. Their feelings get hurt. So they now want to say something or they don't, they're not validated at home. So every time they're in a circle of people, they, they, they feel like they need to say something because at home they don't have a voice. And yes, your feelings might get hurt. And at home, you might not have a voice. But the place for you to grow is where you are emotionally. And if you can increase your ability to control your emotions and understand why things get under your skin, I'll tell you why things get under your skin for starters. Um, people's comments or actions get under your skin because the skin that you're currently operating in is not yours. You're living a false uh, you're, you're conveying a false uh, pretense to who you think you should be as opposed to who you actually want to be. And I call that bridging the gap between your mind and your heart. But when you walk out of your home and you've walked a, out of your home from a loving environment out into a world that's not a loving environment, but you show up so connected with who you are as an individual, you love yourself and you understand that, you know what, no matter what anybody does, it's not going to bother me. For example, when somebody cuts you off as you're on your way somewhere and you either flip them off or you get perturbed, let me share something with you. There was a time that I got cut off when I was in my patrol car as a cop. And at 22, you can imagine a lot of arrogance, very cocky. So I had a light, so I pulled him over. But when I pulled him over, I felt a distraught look in his eyes. And, he, and I said, sir, where are you going? He said, I just got a call um, from the hospital and they're about to take my 17 year old daughter off of life support. So I obviously, I green, I red lit the, all the way there and I got him there. But you never know what somebody's going through as to the reason that they cut you off. And that's just one scenario. But at the end of the day, you don't know what people are going through. So uh, when, you, when you take time to lead, again, leadership is influence, but you lead at home first and then you go into the world that's typically negative, you're not going to be offended. And when you're not offended by people's actions and you're not feeling like you have to have the last word or the first word to um, stroke your own ego, men, I'm talking to you, you, we do this pretty often, then what happens is you're in a space to listen. And the man in the room or woman in the room who does the most listening is the one that's going to grow the quickest because now you're learning to grow from other people's experiences, not your limited experiences in this earth. And my father once said, Son, you'll never learn anything that comes out of your mouth. I like that. I do. I like it. Dom, I've kept you on here a long time, man. I know I, we, did, we can talk for hours about so much more. I'm going to have you back. I want my people to follow you, how they can stay connected to you, learn more about Command Presence, speakers, uh, influencers, experts, anyone, consultants. They all need to experience that. Come to one of your events as well. They're awesome. What's the best way they can follow you and stay connected? You know, I, there's a couple different ways. I, I love social media. So at Dom Fawcett is where I'm at on Instagram. And then I've got a website, domfawcett.com. But I, I, I want to implore people to, if they go to my website, I have a three-minute assessment that will show you where your areas of opportunities are. And I have everybody go th go through it. And you get the results. It's free, if I'm not mistaken. And But take that assessment and connect with yourself first before you think about reaching out to me. You'll learn some things about yourself. Or you can just text me at 602-481-0650. That's 602-481-0650. Yeah, and I'll put the link in here below just so they can stay uh, connected and follow that. And just definitely click that, like make one of the events, Command Presence. It's awesome. Any speaker. Uh, influencer or someone looking to take it up a notch, regardless of how many years experience. I've been in the industry 20 years, you know, and you know, I was there, man. It was great. I learned a lot. And you got a bunch of another uh, awesome stuff coming out for 2021. I mean, you got so much stuff coming out. Before I let you go, though, I got to ask you my top three questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hit me. All right. Number one, what's your favorite movie? Oh, Meet Joe Black and Black Hawk Down. I know you said one, but those are my two favorite. Meet Joe Black and Black Hawk Down. If you were to look down, what was the last thing you were listening to on your playlist this morning or while you were working out or running? What were you listening to? I don't I, I, I don't listen to anything when I run. I did go running. Thank you for calling me out on that. Uh, I listen to my internal thoughts. What is your dog's name? Toretto. <laughs> <laughs> Toretto. Awesome. Toretto. Man. I do uh, realize you are a French bulldog uh, owner as well. 
Yes, love that little guy. And I am too. Uh, my French bulldog is Hugo. Oh, no. how did I not know you had a French bulldog? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, it's Hugo the boss. That's why I call it Hugo boss, like my favorite suit. I'm just like, you know, hey, I named him Hugo. Hugo the boss is what we call him. So I can find out more about that one, but we can do that later. <laughs> uh, hey, Dom, thanks so much for being on today. Everyone, please just follow Dom. Make one of the events. Check out what's going to be popping here in 2021 coming out. Also, listen to the radio show. Oh, tell everybody about the radio. Like, listen to the radio show, too. How can they listen to that, Dom? It's on 960 The Patriot, KKNT. You can also find it on iHeart, just 960 The Patriot, or go to iHeart and uh, put my name in there. But it's it airs live every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. That's Arizona time. It's every Sunday from 1 to 2 p.m. Arizona time on 960 The Patriot, KKNT. All right. Hey, thanks again, Dom. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for your time, buddy. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, friends, you are always on call.